Okay, peeps, welcome back. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about where the markets are heading in October. We're going to be taking a look at all of the macro indicators for the markets. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because regardless of what you're investing in, whether it's a dividend paying stocks, crypto, uh, grow stocks, dividend grow stocks, um, all of the above, these macro indicators will give you some level of indication of what to expect in terms of whether your portfolio is going to go down or up depending on these metrics and you'll understand why later as we get into the video so let's get it so the first thing that we're going to be talking about here is the spx we're going to start off with this since it is the gold standard of investing um, so we got our basically support and resistance levels here <clears throat> Uh, the bulls, pretty much what you're looking for is you're looking for a bounce off of this 4,200 to 4,300 level. You want to see a push back up to 4,600. Bears want to see both these EMAs and the support level cracked. And then we head down to the 200 week moving average, which is the bull bear indicator that I use for the macro uh, big picture as to whether we're long term in a bull market or not. Um, the bears are basically looking for that to break below 39.20. Now, as you guys can see, the 200 week moving average is trending up over time. Uh, the last time we tested it, it was at 3,600. It is now at 39.23. We have our major supports here between 3,400 and 3,600. Uh, the EMAs are sitting at 39.30 and 41.50 respectively between the 200 and the 100. And um, can't really see the green EMA so much, but it's pretty much right in line with this support level here at 4,200. And your major resistance is going to be between 4,590, 4,600, all the way up to 4,800 or the previous all-time highs. So why does this 200-week moving average matter? Well, as you guys can see at the bear market lows last year, we bounced off of it. Uh, the Rony Rona dump would be the exception here. So didn't really have a bounce off of it that time, but uh, you know, that was a black swan event. So it's a little bit different. We bounced in 2018. We bounced in 2016. You keep going back here you guys can see we pretty much bounced every single time with the exception of the uh, great financial crisis. So, what the bulls do not want to see is a break and close below this 200 week moving average. If that happens, then chances are pretty good. The market's going to capitulate down a lot from that point. So let's move on to the NASDAQ. You guys can see a pretty similar picture here, except you have the hundred week getting ready to cross above the 50, which is actually a very bullish sign. You want to see the hundred week kind of curl pretty much straight off of that 200 and right back up to the upside. And then the 50 follow with it. So uh, bulls are pretty much looking for a break of this support level here between, uh, I would say roughly about 13.7 and 14,100. Uh, bears, I mean, are looking for a break below that, uh, below then below the EMAs, 13,500 and all the way down to 20, 12,690. Uh, bulls basically pretty much want to see a bounce off of here and straight back into previous all-time highs at 16.5. So we have our resistance up here at the highs. We have support between this previous support level mentioned and then all the way down at basically about 10,000 up to 10,800 is major structure right now. Uh, Russell 2000, you got support sitting here at, well, the most relevant support line would be this macro trend line here. You can see we have this drawn out. It pretty much goes all the way back to 2016. We didn't include 2020 because that's, a again, a black swan event. Um, the Russell 2000 is made up of mostly micro and small cap uh, tech stocks and different stocks that have really, really small market caps, like, you know, a million, 10 million, uh, 50 million, 100 million, something like that. So um, unfortunately, the price is below these EMAs here, but... Uh, in the short term, the bears are winning, but it looks like we might get a bounce off of this macro support trend line here. So hopefully we get a bounce and then the bulls will be winning. So you have your supports down here between 950 and 1064. Personally, I don't think it's going to go that low, but only time will tell. 
and then between 1600 to 1700 and then that trend line is sitting at 1750 the uh, resistance is all the way up between 2370 to 2450 at the previous highs uh, so structurally speaking we are still actually in a bull market even on the russell 2000 because as you can see the previous resistance here turned into support and you have that trend line as well so now we're going to go into the Dow Jones. Basically, this is old money. Um, so you have your support level here between 26,700 and 27,600. Uh, you have another support between 29,500 and 31,300. The 200 week is sitting at 31,600. So that's pretty much right above this major macro multi year support level here. Uh, the it looks like the 50 has cr crossed um, below the 100 week moving average, but at this point I wouldn't think too much of it because they're not trending down yet. So pretty much bears want to see these EMAs cracked down to the support level. Bulls want to see a bounce off of these EMAs up to previous all-time highs. And the all-time high resistance is sitting between 35,800 and 37,300. So that covers the major indices. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the 50 and 200 day moving averages for the S&P and the NASDAQ. So basically what this is, is it is an indicator to indicate when the markets are oversold and overbought. So what you're looking at down here is the buy zone for kind of um, immediate to midterm investors basically and or swing traders you want to see the uh, basically stocks above the 50 get down to between zero or not zero but like one or two all the way up to about 15. as you can see we held it here during the uh, pandemic and during some of the bear market swing lows last year so this is a good turning point for the bulls to basically you know push stocks back up push stocks higher and for the bears, you want to see it come up here. So then you can obviously dump into this resistance here. Um, so basically this is for bulls. This is a buy zone and this is a sell zone or good time to get into investments and good time to just simply hold and not do anything and wait for it to come back here and the opposite for bears. Uh, so very similar picture here on the NASDAQ. Basically this is a buy zone. This is a sell zone. Uh, the NASDAQ has been respected multiple times, basically throughout the pandemic and the previous year's lows. And the inverse is also true for resistance up here. So if we go over to the 200-day moving average, which is more of your long-term investor play here for the S&P and the NASDAQ, you guys can see in 2018, uh, when the Fed was raising rates back then, you have the pandemic here. And the market lows last year was a great time to get in for long-term buys. And uh, the opposite is true here for bears. Bears would be looking to sell pretty much up in this area here. And this is the NASDAQ version. It's essentially the same thing, but for the NASDAQ, you can see all the different market lows here. Market highs where you would have either wanted to take profit as a bull or basically hold, or as a bear, you want to short the market up here and wait for it to come back down here to take profit. So that takes care of the 50 and the 200 day moving averages for the major indices. We're going to get into the yield curve now. So the metric that the Fed uses is the three month, 10 year treasury yields as the yield curve that they use to determine whether it's inverted or uninverted, whatever the case may be. We don't like to use that. We like to use the two year in place of the three month. Reason being is because if the three month and the 10 year were going to uninvert, or invert, the two year would do it first. So it gives us kind of a front running indicator of what to expect um, for the larger gap treasury yields, like the three month and the, and the 10 year or the three month and the 30 year or something like that. So this is our main metric here. As you guys can see, the uh, 10 year is sitting at 4.68%, whereas the two year treasury yield is sitting at 5.11% in a normal in a normal economic environment, the two-year yield would be lower than the 10-year yield. Here's what I mean. If we click on this chart, you guys can see that 
uh, the two-year treasury yield was not that high until the Fed started raising rates. And the five-year, also same story here. Basically, for this thing to unavert and for a possible, quote, recession to happen, pretty much what we want to see is for the uh, the two-year treasury yield percentage to come below the 10-year. That would mean that it's uninverted. So initially, it would have been uninverted to begin with. So you could basically just swap these percentages, say that the two years at 4.68%, 10 years at 5.11%, that would be considered to be normal. Okay, and then they uninvert. So that would be what the numbers are now. And then, or they invert, I mean, that would be the numbers now. And then they uninvert when the two year goes back below the 10 year. So that's what the yield curve looks like right now. The Fed funds rate, which uh, give me a second here, I got to pull this up. So the Fed funds rate is currently sitting at 5.33%. Um, as far as we know, currently, this is just a guesstimate, but we believe that the Fed's pretty much going to hold rates at this point. They said that maybe they'll do one more rate hike, but we kind of doubt it uh, because, you know, the Treasury has to pay interest on its debt and the Fed can only raise rates so much before eventually the United States can no longer afford to pay their bills. And that would not be good for anybody. So that's the Fed funds rate. We think that it's going to hold and then maybe sell off. As you can see, something similar here and here. It's pretty much what we're expecting. Um, so you got inflation. <clears throat> inflation, the uh, headline inflation is at 3.7%. Nothing goes up or down in a straight line, so we do expect inflation to keep coming back down. Uh, let's see here. So you got core inflation as well, which has come down a lot, 4.3%. We're Basically, by the end of the year, we expect core and inflation, the two of them individually, to be somewhere between 2 to 3% by the end of this year. It sounds crazy. Fed's like, oh, we're going to hold rates till the end of 2024. I'm not buying it. I don't believe that for a second. So... Uh, that's kind of our expectations on inflation. The unemployment rate, again, we've told you guys before. Um, actually, got to get rid of these indicators real quick, so give me a second. So we're going to throw these on here real quick. This is actually not how I would typically have my uh, trading set up or my main indicator setup, but we'll just go with it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the uh, unemployment rate ticked up a little bit to 3.8%. Again, as I've said before, what we don't want to see is our golden cross on this thing and a close above it. We don't want to see that. That would be bad news for the uh, employment market. So we're hoping that it's going to stay relatively flat. So that covers unemployment. <clears throat> Now, if we go into oil, uh, as you can see, oil is holding this trend line. It's sitting above support. <clears throat> Basically, what we want to see is we want to see oil pretty much stay between 60 to about $80 a barrel, maybe preferably down in this lower support range. But oil bulls want to see it go back up to this previous all-time high, and bears want to see it drop off. So that's pretty much that for oil. Um, we don't... We're not really going to be buying a lot of oil stocks or oil, any kind of securities um, until we see the price basically stay in the zone right here. It's not that we're not bullish. We just don't want to pay expensive prices. <clears throat> so that covers that. Um, if we take a look at gold. So uh, buyers basically looking to buy between 1370 and 1440 sellers would be looking to sell between 2090 and 1921. Uh, and then your lowest support would be 1066 to 1170. If we go to platinum, platinum is pretty much a buy right now between 770 and 830. You'd want to sell up here between 1750 to 1930 or 1913, excuse me. Um, Silver, you want to buy between 860 and 1450. Not financial advice. These are just buy and sell zones. Uh, you'd want to sell 
pretty much between $30 to $38 because that is pretty much the high you can. It's it's more or less a high probability that sellers are going to be looking to sell their positions up here when they're looking at the charts. Uh, Palladium, we've actually waited a long time for this to come back down to support to buy and it has not done it yet. But basically, we're looking for about 900 to 1140 <clears throat> to buy palladium and then you would want to sell uh, between 3,400 and roughly about 3,000 bucks. So if we take a look at the fear and greed index, as of right now, the market is experiencing um, the fear sector of the overall index. The reason being is because September is typically pretty bearish. Uh, we do expect that to go to neutral or greed in the following months between October, November, and December. Because as we told you guys before, the last quarter of the year is typically very bullish. So let's take a look at Bitcoin real quick. So we always look at Bitcoin on the weekly. Got a lot of stuff going on here. So Bitcoin has respected this macro up, uptrend here that you guys can see. It's pretty much stuck in a range between roughly about 25, 26,000 all the way up to 31 to 32,000 on Bitcoin. Um, pretty much what you guys would want to see if you're a bull is you want to see this support level hold here at 25,000. And you want to see, as you guys can see here on the chart, the... There was a green candle close above the EMAs. That's very bullish. You basically want to see a bounce and head higher straight into this macro resistance here between 32 and 35,000. Bears want to see this thing dump off. Basically, this candle would be a fake out. You're looking for it to sell back into support at 25,000 and then break below and head towards 19,000. Yeah, about 19,000 on this macro trend line here. So that covers Bitcoin. Now... We're going to take a look at a few more things and then we'll wrap up. So one thing that we have not covered previously is the dollar index. So this is the United States dollar or basically the futures version of the dollar is what this is. So anytime that the dollar is below these EMAs, that's bearish. And when it's above, it's bullish. So um, the DXY and uh, risk on assets, i.e. Bitcoin and stocks, typically have an inverse correlation, inverse relationship. What that means is when the dollar is going down, uh, Bitcoin and stocks typically go up usually. And when dollar is going up, Bitcoin and stocks go, go down. That's usually how it goes. It's not 100% perfect, but more or less that is the inverse relationship between the two. So... Um, <clears throat> bulls on the dollar basically want to see these EMAs hold between 104 to 105 and then push all the way back into highs at 115 here. And bears want to see um, basically the 108 resistance hold and then get rejected and come back down to these EMAs and preferably break down and head back down to major support at $1 even. The VIX is spiking up currently whether it's going to be a major spike or not we'll just have to wait and see but um when the vix is at a low usually that's when stocks are ripping when the vix is at a high that's when stocks are dumping so uh bears would be looking for the vix to get between 34 and roughly about i would say 37 to start selling the market and the bulls would be looking for the vix to stay between 14 and 19 and a half on the VIX to buy the market. Um, be yeah, because basically if you buy up here, you, there's a good chance you may get dumped on. And if you sell down here, there's a good chance you might get short squeezed. These are trading terms, not necessarily investing terms. So that's the VIX. Now, the last two things we're going to look take a look at is the S&P and the crude oil futures settlement prices. So pretty much going into the end of next year, you guys can see that the S&P settlement prices and dates are pretty much heading up, as you guys can see, by the end of next year. Uh, according to the settlement prices, we should be just slightly above 4500 on the S&P, um, which is not quite at all-time highs, but it's trending up in the markets. That's really what matters here. 
uh, we would be hitting all time highs according to this by December of 2026. So pretty much about three years away. But as you guys can see, there is no like 3000 or 2000 or anything like that going on here. Um, and for the oil sediment prices, you guys can see pretty much all the way through the end of next year, oil's pretty much settled to head from currently where it is all the way down to 7750 a barrel. And then as you guys can see over time, it continues to go down and down and down. So anyways, these are all the leading macro indicators. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know if there's anything you want to you would like us to add to this. Uh, this covers a lot, but it may not be everything. If you guys are curious about more, let us know. And we'll see y'all later. Peace.